Hey guys, it's me Nina and I'm back with another video for this week. I've actually been preparing for, I was gonna say a little while now, but it's been like literally a week. I ordered this book on Amazon, took a bunch of notes, um, did some research on it online, and I have so much to share with you guys. But I'm gonna be talking about Joshua Harris's, or Josh Harris's book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, which is a very controversial book that has sparked many other popular YouTubers in the past to talk about it insert pictures of other YouTubers. I think Girl Define talked about them, Katie Gregory talked about them. There's so many different people who have talked about this book and why they either love it or hate it. And something crazy has recently happened. Josh Harris made a statement. I'm gonna link down all these different resources, but he made a statement apologizing for writing this book. And basically, the reason for this was because some people were harmed by this. And I began watching part of his documentary, I read part one of his book, I read several different articles, and I listened to his TED Talk, all in hopes of giving you, whoever's watching this, a comprehensive view of my thoughts on the issue, as well as like an overview, and be a one-stop access, like different resources you can go to, to basically learn more about this book and why Josh Harris has decided to make an apology about it. First, I just want to say, like, when I posted about asking people on my Instagram, just in case you don't follow, follow me instagram.com slash brownlightcurry. I am a New York City teacher as well as a blogger and a YouTuber, so you can follow me on Instagram to stay updated, see my surveys and whatnot. Um, I, I just said that right now because I always forget to say that in the intro, like, I literally always forget to say who I am, I just assume. But if you're new here, I share about my belief on this channel and all things related to Christian media. I feel like I'm talking really fast, like I'm really out of breath. Okay, um, sometimes these videos are so long, so I wanna like get it all out quickly, but I'm gonna stop myself. Um, but yeah, what's it saying? Okay, well, anyway, um, you can go check out the links below to see his documentary and whatnot, but essentially this book was written when Josh Harris was, I believe, 21 years old. First of all, 21 years old, who trusts a 20 year old, 21 year old to write a book about relationships? I believe he was single at the time and later on got married. So first is an issue with the fact that he was so young when he wrote this, but I wanna give props to him for, well, I posted on Instagram about how asking people if they wanted um, to see a review of this or a commentary on it. And someone messaged me to say basically how it's so good that he apologized. And I just wanna throw that out there first. Like, I'm not condemning him. I'm not saying he's an awful person. I really think it's amazing that he took the time to apologize. He's, I actually bought this book in part because he took it out of print. So I wanted to get a copy of it before they no longer had it. And I wanted to see what it was about in order to tell you about it. Um, but I think it's amazing that he did apologize. But at the same point, I think that him apologizing for what he wrote is something that we should take with caution because it made me realize that there are times where I'll put out statements online or I'll say something is good or not good and I'll change my mind. And any human being is a human being. And we'll share information, we'll share our opinions, you'll share what you think, but we need to approach anything, any book, any piece of narrative, anything that we see and really test it and question it and not just accept it because it's popular or a lot of people like it. Because some people based a lot of their beliefs on relationships on this book and were very disappointed or other people were upset because he apologized because they really loved this book and were really disappointed that he apologized for what was written in it. So. Even when you watch this now, who knows, maybe years later Josh Harris will say like his book wasn't that bad. So we need to know how to form our own opinions so that even if someone apologizes for what they wrote or rescinds it, we know it took Joshua Harris 20 years to realize he made a mistake. But we should know looking at it, and a lot of people did know looking at it, that it wasn't good. Or it was good, but only elements of it. Um, this book is dangerous in a lot of ways, and again, I'm not condemning Joshua Harris because um, in his documentary, it is mentioned that the narrative at the time that he wrote this, I believe it was 20 years ago, was a lot to do with purity. And I have a book about the purity myth and slut shaming, and I remember someone, I, I have a pretty small channel, so I was really shocked that someone did this, but they actually emailed me, and they were emailing me in almost like desperation because they had lost their virginity, and they saw my video and I said something about along the lines of 
um, God can make you a virgin again. And someone else had commented basically telling me that this whole idea, idea, uh, this whole idea of virginity is flawed. And it is flawed. This woman came to me and wrote to me about how she had lost her virginity and how she no longer thought that she was worthwhile and how she wanted to hear more about how she could reclaim that. But through the process of making that video and looking at your comments, I realized that this whole construct of virginity and this emphasis that we place on purity above all else is actually the issue, not whether or not you have lost your virginity. And the scene opens up in this book, the very first chapter, it's probably too bright for you to see any of that probably too bright for you to see any of that um, but it opens up basically to a, a scene of a man and a woman at the altar and the woman are standing there about to be married the man and the woman are standing there about to be married giving their wedding vows and then slowly different girls approach this guy and stand next to him and the girl is wondering like why are all these guys this girl is standing next to my groom and then he says, I'm sorry, but these girls all have a piece of my heart. They're all people who have given a piece of my heart to over the years. And this narrative basically is scary. I want to say AF, but that's not appropriate, but very, very scary. Like it's very scary because um, you're basically presenting this idea that if I date the wrong person or if I if I court the wrong person, then I'm giving a piece of my heart away to someone and then I'm not gonna be able to offer my future husband the very best. And this reminds me of a time back when I was in college when someone was speaking and apparently this was like a very popular narrative, but you'll take a rose and you pass it around the room and at the end the rose is all battered and disgusting. And the narrative there is if you let yourself go around and you talk to all these guys or girls, then you only have to offer this desolate part of yourself. And that is not biblical. That's not biblical at all. And that idea and the fact that people clung to this and thought that this was so true um, can be, and I'm guessing like it's not just this, there's other elements that I do like that I will point out um, and things from articles that I wanna mention as well. But it is a dangerous narrative to think that if you make a mistake with dating someone, if you give a piece of your heart to someone else, that you all of a sudden are offering less to your future spouse. And I think that was my bit, my biggest criticism looking at part one of this book. There is just an overemphasis on this idea of purity, when in reality we serve as a Christians, we serve a God who took the most murderous, vile person, Saul in the Bible, and made him into Paul. Somebody who persecuted Christians ultimately became someone who represented Christ. And it doesn't seem like the same God who would use unusual, un, unusable, unusable would be the same God who tells you that you are approaching your relationships incorrectly if you are not pure. And he mentions this. He he says two years ago he began reevaluating this book. He mentions in his TED talk how he had stepped down from a position as a pastor and instead became a student and was able to look back on it. Um, he's not receiving payment for the documentary that he's made. He stopped printing this book and these are all extremely admirable things. But the main premise of his book was that dating should be avoided and he no longer believes in that. And he gave these practices of not dating, not kissing before marriage, um, giving your heart away, and they're just not biblical. So that's a test for us as well. Someone can post something online, maybe you disagree even with things I posted online, but test it against the Bible. Whatever you're seeing online, you can't just take at face value. You must discern within using the Holy Spirit and then also test using God's word and what God has said in the past. And he made promises of like a great sex life, sex, sex life, sex life, even though that's not promised in scripture. If you do all this, if you follow this formula, you will have an amazing sex life. But that didn't happen for people. And he uses the idea of a car maker analogy. He says that good intentions by a car maker and even the endorsement of other customers don't override a problem. So if a car serves some people, but the flaw in design causes damage to others, it still is hurting certain people. And that's why he has decided to discontinue publication. And I personally think that Joshua Harris is extremely brave for doing this and I think it's admirable. But again, a cautionary tale for everyone who reads books written by other people and who lives in this world that we need to all take it with a grain of salt. Um, I read a lot of different articles. A lot of them begin with explaining the beginning scene of this. But many people, there's um, this campaign that ended up happening and they mention it in his documentary. It's called True Love Dates. And 
a lot of those teens swore off dating and in the article written by the Washington Post, you fast forward 2016, those teens who swore off dating have grown up and they're angry. So the people who use a lot of his principles and swore by it and loved it, they grew up and now they're angry. And a lot of this comes from having the wrong mentality. So I'm gonna read a portion of this, this article from Washington Post. The dark side of all this is when the form formulas fail, as they so often do. It's you who must have done it something wrong, and then it's you to fix on your own. Bad marriage, you must have screwed around as a teen. Still in public housing, should have gotten a better job. The if-then mindset doesn't take into account how much is actually out of a person's con personal control or systematic forces, race, class, family history that might hold someone back. This book offered hope that if you follow the formula that you would have an amazing life and love your spouse and whatnot, but people ended up using this and plenty of people realized that the formula did not work for them. And there's so many other issues, so many other things, so many other ways that we grow up and view sexuality and relationships, and all of these things come in to make the picture of who we are today and our struggles with sex and relationships. Um, he also gave a piece on NPR, just gives you like a little bit of an interview. Um, hello, goodbye back when he was 21 years old. I'm just looking through to see like the different things that I had pointed out. Okay, this was really good. This is taken from Slate and this was a message somebody had wrote, written to him. Um, one of the blistering things that someone had written. He ended up posting, he gave permission within his website, he wanted feedback, which shows like his heart was ultimately in a good place. And even when he wrote this, his heart was to serve God and to love God. Um, but someone wrote, I have been married to my wife for over seven years. We've been together for over 10. We have a beautiful daughter and, success and successful careers. When we were dating, we had sex. Because of the shameful purity movement rhetoric we learned from your book, sex became tainted. To this day, I cannot be in intimate with my wife without feeling like I'm doing something wrong, sinful and pure. We both adored your book as young people, and I believe our diligent commitment to your ideas and our failing to stay pure until marriage has permanently damaged our relationship. Years of truth and counseling later, I cannot get the subconscious idea out of my head that I'm doing something wrong. Damn you. And that's essentially the idea that I think a lot of people struggle with. This book paints a formula that if you do things a certain way, you will have things a certain way, but if you fall short, where does that leave you? Or what if you do follow this, but you're so used to looking at sex a certain way that it's still hard when you enter that relationship when you're older. I also want to share some notes from his TED talk. Um, he, the fundamental problem with this book that he mentioned was, he, well, there are some good. He mentioned that you can take a break from dating and focus on yourself, and that was not a narrative people talked about. You don't need a relationship to be complete. But some of the problems were dating can be healthy, and his book presented that it couldn't. It can allow you to learn what you like and dislike. If you follow his formula, it's only one formula. It's not going to work for everyone. And his book was really motivated by fear and fear of sex, which comes across a lot in this book. Um, to end off on this video, and I hope this gave you like some kind of overview, I just wanted to share like different snippets from part one that stuck out to me, um, both good and bad, because not everyone has the time to go through this. And I still think that there are a lot of really interesting ideas here to delve into. Whether or not, it's a lot better to look at it from a perspective of, of should I take it or should I not take it and looking at all of it with a grain of salt. So he talks about, um, there's a big emphasis on purity all throughout the book. Um, one idea he says over here is the idea of focusing on God and better serve him by avoiding romantic relationships and the power of serving God as single, which I don't think that he is against that idea now, but I am tired of hearing that. Like, I am legitimately, like, tired of hearing all these Christian narratives about, you know, um, you're better at serving as a single, and, like, I understand where it comes from, but they almost make you feel as though you're wrong to have this desire to be in a relationship, but what's wrong with that, and what's wrong with pursuing it if you do want it? And that's something that can be criticized. There's also a subconscious message here, it's on page 22, um, he talks about this girl named Alyssa who's dating this guy and like she, was, like she loved being physically intimate, kissing her boyfriend and whatnot, which is not anything wrong, but this book kind of pressured people to not kiss until marriage. And what ended up happening was Alyssa ends up cheating on her boyfriend. 
And the idea here is, you know, Alyssa cared so much about the physical intimacy that she ended up cheating on her boyfriend. And I think that subconsciously paints an image of if you're somebody who loves physical intimacy or you love physical touch, then you're someone who's dishonest because this person who loved it so much ended up being dishonest because of it. Um, and that's definitely something to be wary of because there's nothing wrong if you love physical touch. Some people's love language is physical touch and that's just the way that they receive love. Um, I do agree with the idea of you can give away too much emotionally and he does talk about that. A lot of times people only talk about physical boundaries but there are emotional boundaries to be wary of. Um, he talks about how you should be friends first. like. I come from Indian culture, some people have arranged marriages, and they immediately are looking at this person as a potential spouse. And my parents did that, and basically his narrative is saying like that's wrong, which I disagree with. Um, physical closeness and intimacy, dating distracts you, <laughs> um, enjoy God's gift of single singleness, and to end up um, focus less on being liked and blessing others. So I do agree with that. Like sometimes maybe you want to be seen as attractive, you want attention. So you focus so much on being liked rather than loving others better. So there is a lot of good in this book, but there is still a lot of bad. And I'm gonna continue to delve in. I'm gonna be looking further, but I really wanted to get this video up today or like as soon as possible because um, I think it's a really relevant topic right now. Um, if you're interested in seeing my continued thoughts throughout the book, let me know because I do want to look through it and see what other nuggets or things that are, aren't that great I could talk about or just think about for myself personally. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments below. Do you think, was Joshua Harris's book good for you? Was it bad for you? Um, even just based off of some of the ideas that I've mentioned right now, like is it something that that growing up you really loved or even what you, from what you hear right now, like do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? I'd love to hear what you think. I think if you're Joshua Harris and you happen to somehow be watching this video, um, I think it's extremely brave to do what you did and to have a conversation about it. And ultimately I see your heart in this and I see that you cared, you know, you cared, you made a mistake, but you went out there and you did something about it. And that's extremely admirable. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next week. Um, I know I gave you a lot of information at once, but yeah, I, how long have I been recording? Literally 18 minutes, so I'm gonna stop now before this becomes even more ridiculously long than it is currently.